Okay, so another substitution example. Um, and there was a hint for this one. It says you might want to use your double angle formula first. And they've told you what the substitution is. Shh, guys. So we have 2 sine 2x over 1 plus cos x dx. And it says you might want to use your double angle formula first. So the double angle formula for sine 2x, what is sine 2x the same as? 2 sine x cos x. So the top will be 4 sine x cos x all over 1 plus cos x dx. Now we've got it looking like this, we can actually get on with doing the substitution. So obviously this bottom part that we've got down here, which is our u equals 1 plus cos x, that bit's going to be completely fine. Um, and I'm going to differentiate this to find out what dx is. So du dx, cos x differentiates to minus sine x. So when we rearrange this to make dx the subject, you should get minus 1 over sine x du is equal to dx. So we've got dx, we've got the 1 plus cos x, but I can't really deal with this bit on the top. What's going to be happening with the bit on the top? The, gonna the, sine. the sine bit is going to cancel. So the only thing I really need to worry about here is just finding out what cos x is. And looking at this, what is cos x equal to? Good, cos x is equal to u minus 1. There are no limits here, so I only need to do the integration part. Now, if we actually continue with doing this, we can start doing the re um, replacing stuff. So we have the integral of 4 sine x, cos x is u minus 1, and 1 plus cos x is u, and dx is minus 1 over sine x du. So we get that nice cancelling out of the sine x here and here. So we have, okay, you want to take a minus 4 out to the outside, let's do that. Let's take the minus 4 out so that we've then just got left with u minus 1 over u du. Yes? We split the fraction, so it's actually an integral of u over u, which is 1, minus 1 over u du. And that integrates to u minus ln u, uh, no, oh, and then a plus c that we'll have at the end. Mm -mm. But u is 1 plus cos x minus ln of, whoops, 1 plus cos x, and we've still got the plus c. So you get minus 4, minus 4 cos x, plus 4 ln of 1 plus cos x plus c. And then we'll just compare that to what we've got in the question. So we've got the 4 ln 1 plus cos x. So that's the thing that we've got there. We've got the minus 4 cos x, but they've got a plus k here. Because you've got the minus 4 times the 1. So here, you can just rewrite this and then say that it is 4 ln 1 plus cos x minus 4 cos x plus k. And to the side of it, you could say where k is the same as c minus 4. So if you ever get a different constant to the constant that they've got in the question, but you've got an extra number that's floating around, you can incorporate that number within to the constant and change it from one letter to a different letter. OK? So that's what you should have done for that question. We'll then have a quick look at the second question as well. Obviously, these will be in the notes if you want to write them up afterwards. This one was just, we weren't actually going to do the integration. And the reason we aren't going to do the integration is because that's what we're learning about in today's lesson, how we would do this kind of integration. But we just want to show how this thing would actually transform. So if I just squeeze it in up here, we're trying to integrate x cubed ln of x squared plus 2 and we want to integrate it between 0 and root 2. So someone give me a starting point of what I should be doing here. They've told me that the substitution is x squared plus 2. So would you find x with u? Or differentiate, differentiate u with respect to x? OK, so if I differentiate u, I get du by dx is equal to 2x. And then what shall I do next? OK, so I get uh, 1 over 2x du is equal to dx. Anything else I need to look at? X cubed. Can you sub in 
So I just take out X as well. What do you mean take out X? Like, like make X a subject. Would that help? Um, I don't think so. No. What do you think, Hamza? I thought finding X cubed would be difficult, so I split it into X squared and X. Very, very nice. Finding X cubed is probably going to be messy and difficult from this statement that we've got here. Why um, do you think splitting it into X squared and X is going to be helpful, Hamza? It's just easy. But what can you spot that we've just done that might... Pardon? It's going to cancel out with this X that we have down here. Okay. So let's actually take that bit that you were just talking about. Um, maybe we, before, though, we should look at the limits. So at the moment, we've got our X limits are root 2 and 0. So our U limits, using this, square it and add 2. Square it and add 2. OK, so we're going to now say that from 0 to root 2 of x cubed, which we said is x squared x, ln of x squared plus 2 dx, um, that will transform to 2, 4. Now, x squared, what is x squared? U minus 2. So we get u minus 2 x, ln of x squared plus 2 is u. And then dx is 1 over 2x du. So the x is cancelled. So that was smart for that bit that we've got there. We then get, by putting all of this together, we can take this half and pull it out to the front. We have our 2 and our 4. We have our u minus 2. And we have our ln u du. That's what part A of the question would be to do. Part A of this question would be to actually come up with the thing that they've said. Well, it's not part A, it's part C. I don't know what part A and B were previously in this. But what do you think part D of the question would be? To integrate it, to find out the value of the area. And that's what we're going to look at in today's lesson. How might we integrate this function that we have down here? What was your question, Masuma? If you didn't think you split the x cube, would you have ended up with the um, Probably. And I think the re I mean, it. it perhaps would eventually work. I haven't tried it. Um, but it would be longer. And I think the reason you'd probably get stuck is you would find it so complicated, you would feel like, oh my gosh, this can't be right, oh. and maybe give up. You didn't have to split the x cubed into an x squared and an x. What you could have done is just been like, you know what? x cubed is kind of complicated. And you could have just left it here as an x cubed. And instead of re replacing this line, what we could have done is we could have had between 0 and root 2, if we left it as this, our next line would have been 2, 4. Let's just leave the x cubed because we think it's going to be messy. And we still get ln u. But then the last part, which was our um, dx, is 1 over 2x du. So leave it. And then you can see that the cancelling would happen. So you didn't have to split it. We could have then seen that this x would cancel with the cubed and make it a squared. Then you could look back at your question and say, great, x squared is actually something quite easy that I can deal with. So you didn't have to do the split, like Hamza said. You could have just said, x cubed is messy. I'm going to leave it. And then hope that it's going to do some cancelling out as well. You don't have to pre-do the split for it to work. Okay. Now, we're, um, this statement that we've got here, we get stuck at this point because we cannot integrate this. Why can we not integrate this? Just a, a brief um, thing that might be not so good about integrating this. It's like a product of two things. Yeah, and if they, we've done products of two things previously with integration, but one of those two things needs to be the derivative of the other thing, OK? So this is why this one is different. This is going to need something that's called integration by parts, which I'm going to separate into a different video, OK?